such thing as a perfect team, but I think the I think what I kind of one thing that really stood out to me when I was sort of putting this um, course together, this training, it's all just from me, just as an FYI, I'm just making stuff up as we go, but I have quite a bit of experience from it. Um, and I guess, I like the too. Um, I guess instead of calling it a team, I think we need to call it a business. So I think people are thinking a team is some sort of very, very sort of thing. And this is truly building a business. So you're going from an I business to a they business, or a we business even. So we'll start with we and then we'll go to they. Uh, but the most important thing, like if you think of this, so you're building a team and it's like, oh, what are the next steps? I write ads and, you know, like I hire an admin and I do these things. But really when you're building a business, I think you need to sort of go back a few steps, right? Like. If you've got a business plan and you're going to be presenting it to a bank or presenting it to somebody, you kind of need to have like an overall vision, right? It's not like I would avoid trying to jump in with somebody until you've sort of taken a step back and gone through kind of the basics. And even before a business plan, we're talking about a life plan, right? So this takes a huge amount of drive, a huge amount of commitment. It's like tripling the amount of work you have to do. So you kind of need to have your big vision, like where is my life going? Where do I want it to be in two years or three years or five years? How come I got into real estate? Like what really is, is going on here? What does my family need from me? What kind of hours am I gonna do? Because if you don't take care of yourself and you don't have like something like super driving you, you will, you'll be all over the map. You'll be like falling apart. You'll have multiple team members, you'll have multiple everything, you know what I mean? Like, so I would say the most important thing is that this is a business. So forget the team thing for a second. <coughs> we are building a business, and what are the parts of the business that we need? So if you, are you adding an admin? Are you adding a salesperson? Are you adding, are you outsourcing? Are you virtual, re, virtual assisting? You know, like, you know, there's a whole bunch of different sort of visions of it, but I think it starts with your own personal life vision. And I know you're sort of driven right now. Dave is on the ALC with me, Roberta, and Amy. And we're talking about things that kind of drive us and what sort of gets us going. And Dave's taken some big steps this year. Can you try and tell me It might, it might make me want to answer it. <laughs> Somebody's calling you, just so you know. <laughs> um, I'm like, motivation is going to inspire others. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when you are inspired, you start this incredible opportunity for other people. But unless your vision is massive and it's so huge, they will be like, why am I paying you? Like, why am I giving you part of my referral fees or, or fees or, do you know what I mean? Like, this is not what I signed up for. I'm going to be amazing. And you're like, eh, you're not amazing. So I really feel like, like I was reading, you know, like for example, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, that whole I have a dream kind of thing, he inspired millions of people, right? Nobody had as big a dream as he did. And when you talk to a business coach, like a KW Maps coach or something like that, they have bigger dreams sometimes for you than you do. You know what I mean? Like I could say to you, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do, you know, 30 deals this year, and I'm your coach, and I'm like, dude, you can do 100 deals. And you're then going, really, do you think so? And then you're like, oh, okay. So do you see what I mean? You're like, you're working with somebody who's got a bigger vision than you do. And being the leader of the team, being the head of the business CEO, you got to have a humongous dream to attract really good people. So far so good? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? AD, you can pop in anytime. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was going to say, by everyone sitting in this room is basically saying they're, they're interested or feel like they have the qualities of being a leader. And in order to have people follow us, they need to believe in us. And they need to believe in what it is that we're trying to accomplish, and we need them to buy into it. In order to do that, if everything is really clear from the very beginning, so your vision, your mission, your systems, your plans, how the business runs, then it's really clear as to whether that first that person fits your team or not. Um, because what you'll find in this process of building a team is 
you don't actually get it right the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the, the 15th <laughs> yeah. time. A lot of it blows up. And usually it blows up because usually we don't start this process until we're so far deep and busy that we need someone ASAP. So we just forget all the systems and plans that are in place for us as far as finding the right person. We just pick someone based on our gut feeling, which is the worst thing to do. And then it blows up on us. So Well, that's not building a business. Do you see what I mean? Yes, like exactly. when you're hiring somebody out of desperation because you're too busy, mm -hmm. it's not like this is really good that you're sort of starting here, you're learning, you're like, okay, then what? And then sort of what are my next mm -hmm. sort of steps? Um, and building that whole brand thing. So if you're trying to, again, trying to attract people, you kind of need to have value to you. You need to have mm -hmm. something sort of concrete as far as what you can, you know, what your sort of unique proposition is. Mm -hmm. Sort of like being with a client, right? Mm -hmm. a, a new team member is taking a humongous risk on you. They're taking a financial risk because, you know, they're paying you for, you know, sharing leads. You know, they're giving you money for your admin and all that kind of stuff. But they're also, like, changing their lives. They're changing maybe their companies. They're changing... Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things to fit into your world, and I feel it right now. We just hired three new team members, and that is keeping me hopping. That's all I'm saying because I feel like, like I just feel so responsible for their futures too, which is really a fun thing. But I'm telling you, it's a hell of a lot of responsibility. So, the more work you do on yourself, the more courses you take, the more coaching you get, the more more of this kind of stuff, more masterminding with people who know have been there before emulating other leaders, other real estate um, team, you know, people. There's so many good examples in KW of really fabulous, successful teams all over North America. So the main sort of thing is the starting at sort of square one. So who here has done their life plan? Tell me you've got life plans. Anybody here? It's in my head, not written down. Written down. Okay. So. I am like a coaching junkie, that's all I'm going to say. I've spent 25 years, 26 years, I don't know how long in this business, and I've taken about a million courses, um, and it's been amazing, and what I've learned, I've implemented, but I've basically taken sort of ideas, and one of the biggest things that I learned a long time ago was from Building Champions, um, and that's Todd Duncan, I don't know if you know him, but there's this basic thing, I mean, there's all these cute little stories about building a life plan, but the first thing in my team that everybody has to do is a vision board. Mm -hmm. So you get those magazines, and some people are really into color, and some people are into visual, you know, like they have a yacht, or they have like skiing somewhere, or they have a beach, or they have little hearts, or something like that, you know, or they have like children, flower gardens, I don't know what they have. Uh, some people have all words, some people have sort of a mixture of words. You know, I'm like a very inspired, I'm sort of into reading and stuff, so I'm not much more word and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, my vision is to have freedom and to have choices and to have downtime with my family mm -hmm. and to have all these sorts of things. And when you have that, that kind of gets you going, right? But the first thing, as I say in my team, it's not, you know, how to make a cold call or door knock or how to write an ad. It is what's important to you. And that's the first thing you ask a client, right? So you can sort of work this back even with your relationships with your clients. But the first thing I do with my team is who's important in your life? What's important in your life? What are the priorities? What do you do in your sort of downtime? But also, like for example, for me, financial freedom is a very personal uh, motivation. So for me, growing up, I saw a lot of bad examples of financial stability for example, you know, living beyond your means, pretending to be somebody you're not, and it really did not resonate with me at all, and I felt very much like a fraud in my family, or my family felt a bit like a fraud. And so for me, I was like, financial freedom is so important. And it's not to be rich, it's to be authentic, you know what I mean? So I just never wanted that feeling ever again. So for me, I'm like conservative about my money. I don't want to. Like, I want to die with money. I don't care because it's more important to me to just not ever have any sort of concerns on that side of it. And there's a lot of sort of probably psychological stories behind it. <laughs> but but for me, that's one of my priorities in my in my life. But there's sort of six priorities. Like who here is married? 
spouse, if you don't have to be married, you can <laughs> so have a relationship. <laughs> Who here has kids, right? Kids are sort of up there on your life plan, right? I don't, sometimes people don't plan kids, I get that, you know, it just sort of happens. But you love them and it's all good and your future <laughs> sort of goes. I don't even think business plans, you can like go, okay, in my business it's exactly going to go, it's like what Amy just said, it might screw up, it might kind of go down, but if you have that, you know, map, and the plan, and then this is a priority, and then this is a priority, then you know, it's that whole, you know that, um, you probably don't know it, anyway, Emmett Fox, he's a spiritual writer from way back, his whole thing was staying on the beam as a pilot, they used to have that thing where you had to stay on the beam so you knew where to go. So as a pilot, you always need to know where are you on the beam and you have to keep going back to the beam. The beam is the map, right? And so your life plan is your map for your business too. Because your priorities in your personal, like you know our business is very personal, right? We have relationships with our clients. I think that's an asset and I think you can use your personal strengths to build your relationships with your clients. Like you don't have to just be a computer and you don't have to just be, you know send documents by DocuSign. You can actually have close relationships where people share stuff and you can help them achieve their dreams. This is sort of the start of it. You're teaching yourself how to achieve your dreams. You're like interviewing myself and going, Jules, what is important to me? So we've got kids, we've got spouses, what else is sort of on our life plan? Mariana. What's on your life plan? What would be on your life plan if you had it written down? Uh, I don't have it written down, but uh, uh, financial freedom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and what does the financial freedom get you? Uh, I'm, <clears throat> well, you know, um, how can I say? I've been always struggling, uh, like, you know, with uh, the money. It uh, was always a thing, you know, never had access of it or, you know. So it was, uh, that's for me, like, I am not afraid, I hate to use that word, but uh, when you retire, when you're older, when you cannot work, that you are okay, that right. you're not on the street, or that you're, you know, that other people don't have to take care of you, that you're actually okay when you, you know, when you're old. So these are reasons, or these are things to get you through those downtimes when you're like hiring somebody and it's sort of gone sideways or do you see what I mean? Like you keep going back to that dream, that vision, that like this is me, I can see my future and it, you know, it's not working out but I know that this is like, I'm motivated, I'm going, I'm going for it. And it's uh, going back what you said, like you know, what happened in your, in your life, yeah. it's actually, uh, you know, driving that. It does, it drives it, it right? It happened. So there's things like physical, does anybody have any physical goals in their life, health-wise? Oh, the perfect physical specimens. Yes. <laughs> you can go to the gym. People go to the gym, they want to be healthy physically, you know. People go to church or they're in, involved in sort of spiritual guidance and all that kind of stuff. These are some of the things on your life plan, right? So, like, I have a goddaughter, I like to spend time with her. I have a nephew, I like to spend time with him. I have lots of friends, I love my friends. That has to be a priority. Like, business is important, but unless you're kind of balanced, you're not going to be even a balanced as a business leader either. So, the first thing I did was I wrote up my whole business, my whole life plan, just like a business plan. I have my wife, I have my spiritual health, my physical health, my financial health. All of these sorts of things, and I review it all the time. I can tell you exactly what's on it. I write it down a lot, like I rewrite it, rewrite it. It helps when you're in a fight with your wife or something like that, that you're like, remember, this is number one priority, you know, apologize or let's get back into it, or do you see what I mean? It helps you sort of get there. But also, the people who work with me, they are now getting so much more in their life because I've helped guide them into this. You see what I mean? Everybody on my team, the number one thing is, is their life healthy? Are they doing exactly what they want? Right, because we know if that's healthy, then the work stuff counts. But if anything's missing on the other side, you're just in constant turmoil. That's correct. Like, things are constantly being dropped. Why isn't this happening? What's happening? Why are you, like, whatever it might be. And usually if we take all that away, it's something personal. And your emotional health yes. is, Kind of it, right? 
you kind of, it's that whole airplane analogy, you have to take care of yourself and then you can take care of others. Yeah. So is everybody writing that down? The life plan is number one. If you leave here today, that was it. Yeah, we're done. Okay? So, uh, what are the right reasons to grow your team? Better service to your clients, I think, would be. Wow, that was good. That's like eight. Thanks. Nice. Nailed it. Nailed it. He's perfect. He that was perfect. The perfect <laughs> specimen. Physical specimen. Uh, <laughs> mentally, I'm a dumpster fire. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Um, you know, cancel, cancel, reprogram. You gotta keep saying nice things. Okay. Number one is taking care of your clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're at 40 transactions, you're starting to maybe drop some things. Absolutely. With the clients, right? Their experience. Your likelihood of getting referred when you're like dropping things is keeps going down, right? Mm -hmm. The client's experience goes what gets worse, all that kind of stuff. You can't keep a track, you can't show them everything, you don't have time to negotiate everything, you're like running. Mm -hmm. Any other reasons to grow your team? You guys are thinking about another admin, what's motivating that? Um, well, Amy's concerned that I my workload is a little bit too high. Um, to be honest, I don't share those concerns because I Kind of a workaholic, but um, I just it, feel like you get like dumped with everything, whereas we can kind of divvy up, like and, and I think organized. there's and I think and as we've discussed, there are certain things where we don't do it as well as we'd like to, mm -hmm. and we don't have certain expertise, mm -hmm. and it'd be better to find somebody who is really good with mm -hmm. you know some of the internet marketing or social media and have them take care of that, and we see that spike versus sort of. Yeah. yeah, exactly. When you're talking about a team outsourcing, like outsourcing is a big part of really my sort of overall team, right? I've got people like members of the Julie Kinnear team who we all meet every week and we do all that sort of stuff. But we have floor planners, home mm -hmm. inspectors, we've got web, we've got a webmaster, social media person. We have all these different people who are also representing us. Mm -hmm. Even the people, God, even our handyman are representing us, you know what I mean? Like they're all part of the client experience because they're gonna meet them sometimes, they're gonna talk to them, like our photographer meets all of our clients and our floor planner comes, and home inspector often comes. So, but even back to the expertise, you know, I know a couple of realtors who take their own photos and I'm like, dude, seriously. <laughs> and it doesn't help the client. Yeah. You're, you know, saving money or whatever, but, you know, stagers are another part of your expertise. So you can also think, by the way, of it as an outsourcing. It doesn't have to be on your team yeah. as a permanent full-time member. Our web people who are, handle our website and our social media and all that kind of stuff, they do a lot of our design of our feature sheets and a lot of our sort of overall look and our pre-sale, you know, whatever information and stuff. So they become a huge member of our team, but they're not, like I'm not, meeting with them every week. I give them advice, guidance or whatever. They help with, with our videos, but then we meet. It's kind of hard to meet with them every week. They live in Bratislava, so. <laughs> oh, they're overseas. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we meet once a year, physically, we get together. Yeah. And probably quarterly, I do a FaceTime, like an hour long meeting that way. And daily, we update each other. Uh, but it can all be done remotely. So it works, just saying. That's how ours works, but that's, that's one option. Um, but I definitely agree that bringing on expertise is a fantastic idea. And sticking to what we're good at. Sticking to what we're Which good is at. what you're saying here. So if there's certain things that we're really good at, we'll let, great, let's drop, create our job profile based on that. The things that we're not so good at, create a job profile for someone that fits like mm -hmm. those things. Right? Correct. Okay, other good reasons. Grow, to grow. To grow. To grow. Is that a good reason? I'm just I'm personally, good. or for your business, or yeah, what does grow mean? For the grow business, the business. For the business to, yeah. to step up, to go to the next level. Sometimes one person just cannot do it. Yeah. So business goal, basically. Yeah. That's that whole analogy in the MREA book, like the climbing Mount Everest. You cannot climb Mount Everest. Almost never are you the most successful <laughs> without Sherpas and everybody else. You know, you need a lot of people. So growing the business, and how does that help? You, how will growing the business help you? Sharing responsibility, sharing some workload, sharing uh, expenses. 
One of the reasons why, just as an FYI, because part of this is today is you hopefully learning from me some stuff, uh, we're growing the team because we do have fixed expenses, like our web team, that you know you might as well have more people to use the exact same service. Right? Mm -hmm. We're still doing it. We would be doing it whether we had one person or five people. Mm -hmm. So it's good sharing. And back to this whole sticking with what you're good at, when you grow your business, you get to specialize in the things that you're you know, better at. So I totally agree that growing the business helps. It's not a selfish need, it's actually a, you know, improving the business when you're growing your business, right? Well, to follow up on that, specifically you're growing, you know, your life, hopefully you're taking an X amount of workload off that you're able to put back into your family or whatever it is mm -hmm. that you want. Boom! Mm -hmm. Eventually. Boom! Eventually after the training phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I do think it, it has, like, my life has totally changed yeah. from being an independent realtor on my own. Like, I do have weekends, and I, I don't do open houses, and I'm not the same agent that I was 20 years ago, you know what I mean? So I've been able to accomplish a lot, and that's, I will, you know, credit my team for giving me a huge amount of my quality of life back. And, by the way, they also get the same quality, not same, but similar quality of life they too get. So you can actually bring on really super successful people who also want to be in an environment where we're all trying to help each other mm -hmm. and support each other. And you can go on holidays and the client gets the same experience. And you know, everything like a, a, a team that everything's really working well in, the client experience stays the same whether you're there or not, <clears throat> right? That's the whole sort of magic. So you're getting a quality of life, the client's getting a quality of life, like everything is sort of working. I think a big driver too for people as to why they want to build a team is because as realtor realtors we're, you know, a lot of times islands unto ourselves and we're wearing all the hats and we're working from home and you feel a lot of times like you're on your own. So it can be a lone business when you're working on the business. Um, so when you build a team, now all of a sudden you've got a whole other person to share ideas with, brainstorm with, um, grow, you know. That's what the team has now. You yeah. have a person who you're like excited to work with because you're like getting ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And you're more motivated by it. Mm -hmm. I totally agree that the loneliness. Does that, did anybody else have that? Yeah. <laughs> loneliness, <laughs> right? I find it this exact same thing. Like I find, I don't know. Nobody gives a crap, really. You could do whatever you want, and really nobody cares. Like, whether you're successful or not, Roberta. That's why it's so nice to have people, I mean, thank goodness you're at KW, because we do actually care. But, I, sure. technically, you know, we're all our own little independent contractors. I was just going to say, I was so lonely before I joined KW. Yeah. But I, I, can't, I can say for sure it's not loneliness no more. That's right. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But okay. you've joined, sure. you've chosen to, uh, you know, so get, get involved. That's how we get involved. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like too, it, that concept lends to the concept of accountability. You're That's, ready, you're at a point in your business when you're like, okay, I want this to grow and change. So to get to that next step, having that, like a partner in my business or an admin and having that accountability piece starts to drive things forward. So one of the things that happened in my career, and it can, it's sort of happened so many times throughout is I've been to conferences and courses and, and <clears throat> things like that, and I've met amazing people. And some of the courses require you to get into a little, they call them do groups at VRO, which is like three people and you're across North America, and you do a sort of FaceTime, Google Hangouts kind of meeting every week. Uh, and so I was in masterminds that way. I've been in masterminds with like Glenn McQueenie and different people throughout my whole career. So, and it's evolved. like maybe a year, maybe two, three years for the max, and then I changed my mastermind group over and over and over, and that, whether you're an independent contractor or not, because today I know lots of people here are not uh, in teams yet, having your own little mastermind is mm. fantastic. People joining the masterminds here is amazing, which I'm a huge proponent of, and I think it's a ma major bonus of being in KWNR, because we focus on it. Mm. Even people from other companies. Like my mom's a realtor, and when I was, God, it was like 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I was her coach because she was getting back into real, like she was a manager for a long time, and I was her coach. 
So I, the little mastermind group, we called it PB and J. It was Pat, Brenda, and Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and for a couple of years, I did coaching of them. And when I'm coaching, and keep in mind, I'm obviously a generation younger, but I, I knew a lot, right? And they were just getting back into the real estate, like the trading and stuff. And they were learning a lot too. And it was awesome because when I'm teaching, they're learning. And when they're teaching, like, I, I mean, when I'm teaching, I'm learning. And even today, you guys, I'm learning just as much as hopefully you're learning. So it's like a give and take. So masterminds are a lot about sharing. And when you're sharing, you're able to uh, articulate some of your ideas. And then you learn from their ideas. And then you implement them and stuff like that. So it's quite a powerful thing. And it, a lot of it, you can have accountability. Mm -hmm. And the peer-to-peer -peer concept too, right? Find exactly someone what it is. who's on the same motivational and growth path as you. And it's really important, I think, to be at the same somewhat like basic level, whether it's number of deals or GCI, and, and connect with that person and, and, and set like weekly calls where it's like, okay, let's hold ourselves accountable and get together. Because why, again, like don't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. Connect with someone who's doing a business similar to what you want to do and, and grow it. Or somebody way. who inspires you. Like I've yeah. been with James Benson, I've been with mm -hmm. Chuck Charlton, mm -hmm. I've been with Dan uh, Woods. So all kinds of really cool people. They, Some of them have asked me over the years and they wanted some of my experience mm -hmm. that I had because they could see that I... But your peers, and that's the point, you've got to each bring something to the table. That's right. You both have to be like... It doesn't yes. work when you're really too no. far. Yes. I totally agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But these are kind of fun sort of ideas. And again, it's getting you into that whole team thing and getting yeah. you exposed to other people who are, you know, inspiring and have creative ideas. And like Naveen, where you're saying right now almost, like that's kind of where you're at at the moment with starting out is the two of you coming to the table and saying, okay, let's brainstorm together, use our mind share. And you can be accountable. To, exactly. And then account, build an accountability piece in. Because um, if there's any advice I could give based on you know, experience of seeing other realtors do this, two realtors that just join up without having a very clear plan and path and path and how that's gonna move forward, nine times, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 blows up. Yeah. Um, it boils down to money at the end of the day. So as a starting point, if that's what you're doing, do what you're doing, but then if you're like, okay, this works, we work together, put a really clear plan in place. Yeah, I know, I, yeah. I see this yeah. It's kind of yeah. moving that way anyway, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dave? So, to that point, if you can have an accountability partner, you're going to actually be accountable to one another, possibly build a business, a business and a partnership. Does it make sense from a, from a growth perspective to bring on like a shared administrator to start the process? Eventually. Eventually. I would start with just the accountability piece personally. Mm -hmm. That's not good. With a plan. Yes. Sorry, yeah. So, the, the one key, and I hope I left this with you guys last time too, is every business is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What Amy's doing and how you progressed is different than what I've progressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sort of similar, but it's your thing. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? And mine is mine, and yours will be yours. So whether you join a partner and you get a new admin, because that works. That's a definite possibility, and I've seen it work. There are two different, and sometimes people share admin, and they don't have they, they're not partners. Mm -hmm. They're just, you guys both have your own little businesses and you want an admin person and you share that person. So like it can work in a million different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Just keep that in mind. So back to the life plan, to the business plan. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting, who here has read the MRA book? Mm -hmm. Hands up you guys, like enthusiasm here. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking amazing. <laughs> like everybody and you too? Yeah, it's uh, good. Forrest gave it to me, I think, a while Yeah. Ago. Well, Gary Keller would be very proud of you guys. This is really <laughs> impressive. We've got the A plusers here. Okay, so basically, my course is over. Just read the MRA. <laughs> <laughs> so he has like four different models and different models on how to build a business. I've taken, because I've done in KW courses long before I joined KW, probably 10 years before I joined KW. Um, I started taking. You know, I started going to family reunion and, and all the different courses. Anyway, whatever. So the point is, is that it can be anything you want. And that's the beauty. And I think realtors are crazy, creative, independent spirits that have their own world, 
right? Like the Farquhars have the Farquhar advantage. They're a family very different than mine. I have just me and, but Jen joined me. She's my sister-in-law. I didn't know that was going to happen at first. It's like she got into business 16 years, I think, after I did. You see what I mean? Like it just sort of evolves, mm -hmm. but it's your thing. And however your thing goes is like, it's good. It's awesome. Because it's yours. And that's the best part. I love this business for that. You can, there's no rules. No rules at all. Um, okay, so the way my team evolved, and I'll just do a really quick synopsis, is I was an independent contractor. I joined a team. Well, I joined a guy, a realtor, uh, in Bloor West for three years in the mid-90s, 95 to 97. I started in real estate in 92, 93, and then, in, anyway, average sale price sucked, whatever. I, but, but what I really wanted, I was actually doing okay, I was doing a couple deals a month, but average sale price was not 800000 or a million, it was 175000 kind of thing, it was low. So financially, it was like, am I staying in this business? It kind of sucks, this business. I mean, I like it, but anyway, so I really admired Theodore Babiak, and I just said, dude, and he said, definitely, and we joined forces for three years. We are polar opposites, but I think we both got a lot out of it. I think we learned a ton. He was doing like 100 deals a year. I was doing a quarter of that. I started to learn, and that was my vision. I'm like, I want to do 100 deals a year. And that's why I joined him, and I was willing to do whatever it took, which meant working a heck of a lot. But it was great, awesome experience. Then I went out on my own. My business was growing really fast, and blah, 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 blah. Um, I eventually needed an assistant. And I did all the mistakes all the wrong way. I hired my friends, I hired my cousins, blah, blah, somebody visiting from Kent to Canada for six months. I hired an actress, I hired all kinds of bad people. Don't do it that. It's a big mistake. <laughs> Learn how to hire properly. Take, you know, there's career a lot of courses, career visioning. Mm -hmm. There's like a whole, I've taken them lots. I know all the boring, I hate hiring, that's not my. Um, actually, I have fun now in hiring because we get really creative with our ideas, but back then it wasn't really fun. So the point of the story is I finally hired a professional, you know, full-time career administrator who changed my life. And so that was my sort of step. But it was like night and day from everything else. But I'll tell you what I learned is I learned that teaching them just like you guys, mm -hmm. teaching, like going to the same courses. We did all the same, like we went all over North America, we went to courses all the time, all of this stuff, and we were learning together and we were growing it and it was awesome. So it became, uh, like we documented all of our systems, we, we, you know, I had a good system. I was making, you know, I was taking care of a lot of clients, I had a lot of referrals, like life was good, I was following the BRO, the Joe Stump stuff, everything was good, but I was overwhelmed, I needed more help. Anyway, Nicole and I were awesome. So she and I really changed it, and then it was very soon after I had a buyer's agent, he was with me. So Nicole was with me for six years. I think six years. KJ was with me for about six years. He was my first buyer's agent. He's still my business partner. Then Jen joined me as a buyer's agent, and then I hired a second in man, and then Holly hired, joined me as a buyer. So Jen joined in 2006, Holly in 2008, I forget them. Anyway, so the point of the story is that I, have to, I still have Paul and Jen on my team. And um, I, I hired Claire, I think, in 2010. So I have long-term people, but they're all career people. So Claire came as a professional, licensed real estate admin person, and it's been good. But I have to tell you, I made like, a whole lot of mistakes in between. And even in the last few years, I've probably hired somebody every other year that I've parted ways with within six weeks six months. Mm -hmm. Even when you have the greatest expectations and you like interview them five million times and you sit down and you're all totally excited about it, it doesn't always translate. And I have lots of experience and I have a lot of emotional things that I'm working on. I take, I do headspace, which I think has helped a lot. Anybody into meditation here? Yeah. 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 It's basically daily learning. It's guided meditation. Anybody do it? Not headspace. I do like 10, 15 minutes a day just on my own. So there you go. I, I the guide for me really works, and my whole team is like you're like a different person. But that was a year and a half ago, two years ago, like more than a year and a half ago, and it's changed everything that I've done. So you can always grow and learn here. I've made tons of mistakes, but I've had lots of success, and 
as I say, your business is Mariana starting a place, look, a partnership in Croatia. Slovenia. 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 Why do we call it Croatia? Know, but They're all very similar. Slovenia is really nice. Apparently, it has great. Everybody says it's gorgeous. Now. Anyway, so that's my sort of that's my sort of story. I was with Royal LePage for 21 years. I've now been here. This is my fifth year, I think. Um, had it took me a while to be, you know, Chairman's Club, really high level. It's slow and steady. That's what I would say. Slow and steady. That's my sort of guess. But my first thing is your business plan. So in your business plan, who here has a business plan? OK. And what is included? You guys aren't very enthusiastic today. Like, arms up. John, you have a business plan. Yes. 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 OK. What is on your business plan? Give us a uh, quick. Lead gen, who I'm going to call, where we get my leads from, how I'm going to do it. Good. How many I'm going to do. Can we stick so to numbers? It? Numbers, yeah. Anything else on your business plan? Um, Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'll look at it. I'm not fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody here have a vision for their team and a mission for their team? Written out. Let me get 135, 531. 135. You've got your 135. Yeah. And That's a like vision and a mission for your business. Beyond the year? No. Like just overall, overall vision for your business. Anybody here? Amy, give me some help here. I, no, I can't. There I don't. Like, I just kind of say, okay, what I do last year, like in terms of, yeah. I don't really have like a vision. Like oh, I know. Do you see what I'm saying? No, this I can't give you like a concrete guy. I love yeah. it. I always yeah. compare myself to last year. Than than last year. Than last year. <laughs> so I have a vision and a mission that I hand to every client that I meet. It is on my website. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because the more it's everywhere, the more you actually have to be held accountable to it, mm -hmm. and the more you're like promising. The world, and when you say it out loud, then it will come back to you, right? And when they know what your sort of vision is, then they can decide, they can self select out too, whether they want to be part of your vision and whether they feel like they're part of your vision. But when your vision is so exciting and inspiring, it's like, I want to be with this person. I think this person's cool, man. And then they get to know you instantly. So does anybody know my vision? What's your vision? Do you have one? Well, the vision for the office here at Keller Williams yes. Neighborhood is um, to have a vibrant market center where uh, growing and sharing both personally and professionally are the cornerstone of our market center. And then our mission is to help each and every realtor in the office accomplish their goals um, uh, through supporting, supporting them through um, educational opportunities here at the market center and leadership. Yeah. Okay. So KWNR vision, and I was a big, you know, like a big supporter of having something like this. Really clarity. First of all, it's the personal and professional. I think the whole KWNR. One of the benefits of being here is that they care more as much about your personal and your professional. Because again, we're getting back to that whole life thing. So okay. So it's personal and professional growth. What else is in? Well, and also it starts with the vibrant market center concept. You know, the more that we all are together and connecting and sharing and mind sharing creates so many more opportunities for us to learn and grow. Um, so there was that side of things. And then um, the learning and, uh, sorry, growing and sharing. And there's educational leadership. Yeah. And then the mission side mission. of things is um, where we get into how we, the goal is to get every, help everyone else achieve their goals through educational opportunities and leadership at the Market Center. So people ask me, how come I join KW? And one of the reasons is so that my team could have leadership responsibilities mm -hmm. and opportunities to grow because I think we all grow when we're challenged and we get some of our fears and also when we have an opportunity mm -hmm. to teach, train, mastermind, to do all this stuff. So I saw it as like, so Tyler's led a mastermind group, Jen's led a mastermind group, Holly's been on the ALC, Jen's been on the ALC. Um, we've taught at Ignite, each of them has taught different things at Ignite. It's all, but now it's not just about me, Julie. It's about Holly as Holly Chandler and Jen as Jen for Palacios. It's not just me because at Royal Page, it just seemed that it was, I was getting sort of all the accolades and I really wanted them to bloom and 
flourish and all that kind of stuff. And that's just a little microcosm of all of us here. It's awesome. So this is the vision for KWNR, and this is a beautiful thing. Do you see what I mean? So when people know, and like for example, you're trying to attract new people into your life and new uh, realtors to come to this office, if they know that we want a vibrant market center and that we're learning and growing and sharing together, and that we're you know it's personal and professional, all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, they don't care about your number. Just so you know, they don't care how many people we want to be in this market center, and that our business plan is to hire however many people. This is what they care about. And this is what your clients care about, and this is what your new team members care about. Because this gets you through all of the decisions. Mm -hmm. Roberta, if you know your vision, you will know whether to hire someone or not. You will know whether it's going to be an admin person, whether it's going to be a realtor. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you know your vision, you know, like, for example, if you guys are getting an admin person, it means somebody else is going to be doing all the trades and the transactions and the showings. So your quality of life will improve in some places, but it might not improve in some other places. So, but you'll know that. Do you see what I mean? You'll know. And you'll, you'll attract that. clients or someone to your team that fits your vision and fits your mission and believes in it. So they are, you know, the right, you know, ideally the right person. That, does that make sense? I don't know. Go ahead. What was your mission statement? Uh, well, it's interesting because we've actually revised it for the first time in like 15 years this year, but only because we've taken more coaching. But basically, uh, it's to build a strong referral-based real estate business with lifelong client relationships. So that's my thing, a strong referral-based real estate business with lifelong relationships. Mm -hmm. That's all of my clients know that. Which means that right away they know that I'm here for the long haul, we're here to have a long relationship. I build it by referral, which means I'm training them in their head that they realize that I work referral-based. But also, I feel accountable to that, meaning my quality of experience for them has to be strong enough that they'll want to refer. So that's where my accountability comes in. And then this year, we've, had, we've added to it that we're here to guide and protect all of our, our, our clients and their families through their, you know, through their real estate needs. So we've added guiding and protecting our clients and families. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more about them, so do you see what I mean? So mm -hmm. just learn. And you open all of your meetings by consulting with us. We open all our meetings, it's in all of our materials. Our meeting with our team for, so one of the big things that our team has done, One of I, I mean I have a lot of unique ideas or things that we do that I think help our team stay strong, but one of them is to read out our vision and our mission every single meeting. Forever and ever, like we've read, it's been insane. Internalize it. Well, it's like the base of our whole decision making. Yeah. It's the base of every relationship we have, and it's the reason why we're all together. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting, huh? It's like really simple too. Just so you know, mm -hmm. really simple. Mm -hmm. We read a lot of books, so we get like we added to our whole thing about um, you know the fish book. You know those guys who throw fish in Seattle fish market. Mm -hmm. They're pretty funny. Anyway, there's a book. Pike Market. Book. Yeah. What's his name? Was just there. It's really cool. Anyway, they're a really strong team, and they wrote a book about that team, and so we incorporated some of the fun ideas, and it's basically about supporting each other, and if you need a helping hand or a good ear, you know, make people stay and stuff like that. So we added a little bit of that for our team. We have the Nookshuk philosophy, which is a guiding. Anyway, doesn't matter. That's our stuff. Uh, but this is sort of the foundation of the JKT, and it can be. You know, you create your own sort of foundation. Well, by having a nutshell, it actually becomes really visual as well, mm -hmm. as an example. Yes. Which is interesting, because as soon as you see that, you relate that to certain things. That's right. And so the nutshell for me and my clients is that we are guiding them. And yeah. it did actually protect them. So to all, you see what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. all that we do comes all sort of full circle. The guiding is literally physically, they were used as guideposts in the Arctic where there's no trees, right? People would build them and say, this is the way. It also means that people came before you, like I've come before you in the sense that I've done many transactions before you've had to sell your house here so I can help relate some of my experiences with you. You know, there's a lot sort of all going on in that sort of thing. Um, so that's sort of where our branding came from and our stuff. But again, it comes from me personally. I'm from the West Coast. The whole Anuksha really related to me. There's a lot of 
a long time ago, like a lot of businesses got sort of into it, and you guys knew that the Vancouver Olympics and stuff, but long before that, it's just been a very, I don't know, a very, imper a very personal sort of thing for me. Um, but as a, you know, you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen my signature, courageous leader. I'm trying to emulate, do you see what I mean? I'm like trying to always put it out there on the feeling that I want people to have of me, even the team, my clients, you guys, like I want, it's me again being accountable to that sort of vision. It's putting it out there. Do you sign your office courageous leader? I sign my letters, my emails. I identify myself as a courageous leader. And by the way, I started as fearless. Fearless is still putting that word fear in my head. And I don't want fear. So it's that whole, do you know that little story? So I've taken, I'm telling you, I've read a million books. I know so many funny stories, but one of them Joe Stump taught me, which is that don't spill the milk. So you're walking, a little kid is walking across the rec room floor, and, you, and you're saying to him, don't spill the milk. And of course, what do they do? Spill the milk. So instead, you say, hold on to your glass. And what are they going to do? Hold on to your glass. It's the whole courageous thing. Courage versus fear. I want to be a courageous leader. Well, I'm putting it out to the world. It's the whole law of attraction, right? Law of attraction. Like what you're putting out is what you're going to be receiving. What you give, so, you And receive. if you say, I'm going to spill the milk, you're basically telling the universe, I want to spill, spill the milk. The milk. Yeah, I'm going to spill the milk, and so then the milk spills. So we put this out to the universe, and we're going to attract people to do that. So next thing, you've got your life plan. Next one is vision. Can everybody commit to the writing a vision for your team? It's a little bit of internal work, do you see guys? It's like a lot of building a team and a business is internal work. It's like sitting down and taking time away from the noise. Away from the noise, but the more you focus and the more you think about it, the more you will have success, the more it will grow. So, I don't have a team. Yes. But I'm gonna write a vision for a team of one. Correct. Okay. You have a team. Mm -hmm. You are the you are the administrator. <laughs> you are everything right now. Well, you're the marketing person. You're the follow-up person. You know. But you've got a photographer. You've got a stager. You've got someone that's for right. yes. You've got a brochure yeah. guy. You've got a print guy. Like you've got a team. And it's not I only don't, responsible yeah. to you. Yeah. 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 Like that's not. It took time to build those relationships. Don't sell it short. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that we sort of touched on in the very beginning of calling this a business. And if you guys look on most business websites, they have a vision and a mission. Mm -hmm. So we're just like upping our game here to be professionals and we're running a business, not just a some sort of goofy real estate team. It's not really anything. Mm -hmm. We're professionalizing ourselves here. Okay, so who are you really? What does your future look like? When your values are clear, the decision is easy. A lot of this is back to your value system. That's where my sort of whole thing comes from. And don't copy what I'm doing, because it's your own personal thing. But you can read about visions, and you can read about missions, and you can get inspiration from all that kind of stuff. But, but that's basically how it works. Um, so what about leads, listings, leverage? Anybody heard of that? Yes? If you've read the MRA book, you guys are all liars here. Have you read it? Yeah. Leads, listings, leverage. And what's the last one? Referrals. Leverage, dude. Oh. <laughs> Leads, listings, leverage. So if Gary Keller was here teaching this instead of me, because he's much more of a, I'm a little maybe more emotional about it, then he is much more of the numbers, like this is how it works. So his is all about red light, green light. It's all about can't hire anybody until you have the money and this is a good plan like don't get me wrong like Gary's got it all going on here so the leads do you remember all this this triangle that triangle leads leads well this is what I'm telling you so his whole thing is do not hire until you have enough leads so he was doing the right thing getting the leads, then you get the listings, because listings mean you have a perpetual business, right? 
You understand that whole theory behind having a listing? It means that you get exposure, it means you have a reason to get in touch with people, people call you, you have open houses, you have a, re a way to continue your business. You know, it basically opens more doors. Then you get into leverage. So this is the first, this is the second, this is the third. That's the business triangle of the KW model, but also real estate in general. So the part about the leads, by the way, it's got to be a consistency, right? We're back to that whole consistency. So yes, you get a lead here and there. That's not really consistent. What you want to do is have a stream of leads. You want so many leads that you can't handle them. And you're like referring to other people. You're not answering your phone calls. You're ignoring the zero to five, four star leads and you're only dealing with five star. It's great, life is good. Uh, you're doing little Facebook ads, you're doing open houses, you're doing, but it has to be consistent. You're doing a farm, door knocking. Alex, how do you get your business? You've got a mother's group or something like that? Yeah, and also Facebook. Right, mostly Facebook. So she's connected with a whole bunch of people in your neighborhood or the West End? No, or it's mostly, yeah, West End and mostly just Ukrainian community. So there you go. West End, Ukrainian community, and is it a mother's group or not? Yeah, Ukrainian moms in Toronto. There you go. See what I'm talking about? That is called a system. That is a buildable, renewable, you know, something that you can build on, grow, and it can consistently bring in if you're sort of helping them, they'll help you back, that kind of thing. But your leads, so back to the whole, when you hire an admin person, hopefully that's your first only because there's a lot of stuff you want to do, but the main thing is to document your systems. Because the whole point of a team is that they're getting the same experience whether you're there or not. So I'm going on holidays soon. Last year I went to Australia and New Zealand, this year I'm going to South America for a while, and things are just going to continue to go because we have systems. We have plans, you know, like a buyer calls, what's the next step? Then this, you know, they get this email, they get that email, they get signed up for this, they get that. The newsletter goes out, all that kind of stuff, like your systems. So your leads come in from your systems. So there's Ukrainian, Facebook, mom's group. How do you get your leads? Um, well, my husband is a hairstylist, so yeah. I meet every single You get person. a lot of that? Yeah, I've gotten That's some cool. leads from him and a farm. And What's farm? What, what does that mean? Like farm the area. So, Send like a, a newsletter a, out. A physical area? Yeah. Okay. Um, what else? So do you have Friends. a system around your farm area? Like you know what to do every month? You planned it out for the year? It's all about your business plan? Well, I hire a company that does it. So I have to come up with the content or like a message. They come up with the content, I come up with a message, and then I input my listings or I pull listings from so it happens monthly, monthly kind of thing. Yeah. Door knock. Door knock. Do door knock that area. So basically, you know, I mean, this is that whole generation thing. But what we want is for you to document that whole thing, so that if somebody else comes in, you're on holidays, you know what they know what to do that day, that week. Brian, for example, knows more about what's going on than he does. Totally. <laughs> it's true. Worse when sellers are like. Is the 4.30, who's the 4.30 appointment? Are they coming through today? You're like, you're like I have no idea I that someone's even coming through today. But you, your brain is not filled with that. Your brain is filled with new ideas. Totally. And it's like taking care of the, don't worry. Yeah, but it's I used to know it all. And now I'm like, I don't know anything. <laughs> but, that's, but that was what we came up with is yeah. you concentrate on what you're really good at mm -hmm. and I'll take care of the business. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's... Like I used to stuff envelopes, I printed, wrote, I printed the, the labels, I did all that shit. Mm -hmm. I know exactly, I knew exactly how to do it all. But the reality I is, just send those emails out. You're, you're better off, you know, everybody yeah. here in this room, except me, because I'm a good person, is their best thing is buying and selling real estate. So, you know, get somebody to take care of all the other things that you're not as good at. So like, you know, it goes back to, you know, the expertise That's right. and you know, dividing up your, your business that way. So when you're making a decision on hiring, part of it is your vision, part of it is following this why grow, and part of it is making sure you have systems. So people do not join you if 
you don't have your shit together, back to that. Do not even think about hiring anybody until you clarify exactly what the next steps are. Even if it is, this is what I need my new admin to do as soon as they get hired. I've got it all written down or they can merge things or whatever. Do you see what I mean? Uh, so then listings, you know, all your systems around marketing and all that kind of stuff, they can help you improve it, but you have to have kind of a basic. You know, you have to be generating the money because you can't hire an admin person and not pay them. Because if I hired somebody away from somebody else and I only had a month or two money, then that's just not enough. It's just not fair. You're over-promising and under-delivering. So save up your money, force yourself into this whole thing. But again, part of it is you're you're willing to push through from all your other experiences. You're pushing through to build this team. You're willing to save your money. You're willing to put it all aside. You're willing to separate it all, to build this business plan, to build this vision, because you can see the future. It doesn't happen overnight. It's step by step by step. OK, next. What are your questions that we have today? Ready, slow, and steady. Sees future downline teams. What about that? How do we talk about that? Who here has a downline? I'm working on it. Do you have anybody in your downline? No. Anybody? Yes. Natalie does. John does. Anybody else? Yes. You do. Nice. And nobody here? Ryan, you're not no. trading? No. So one of the benefits of actually having somebody on your team is also that they're in your downline. <laughs> and Irene Kashansky for years was like, are you an idiot? You have this big team and you could make so much money from it. To tell you the truth, I did not, I didn't buy into the downline thing. I was like, I'm making lots of money. Don't even think about it. I don't want to change my business. My business is perfectly great. That's the way it is. But I have to say, it's sort of nice to get a little extra. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, and then they, the plus bonus again, is that they can build their own downlines. So again, when you're offering and you're, and you're creating this job career opportunity for a new agent, or even Ryan, you could get somebody in your down. Oh, oh, absolutely. Can you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can get money from it? Oh, oh cool. See? Yeah. Even yeah. your mid person can do that. Yeah. But do you see what I mean? So when you're joining an, a company like KW, it's, it's set up already for their success. And it is honestly so Empower, I don't know what it is. It, the, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me was when my sister-in-law, who was a good friend of mine from high school or from camp or whatever, but we were just friends. We weren't even very good friends. We were friends. I think we were friendly, but I didn't know her dreams and her goals and stuff like that. And when I sat her down and I was like, "This is what is your sort of dream?" and she's like, "I really want a horse, but I'll get that when I retire. And I want my cottage. I'll get that when I retire." And within two years, she had bought her first cot. She had bought her cottage which actually works great because there's half of it she rents, so she can afford part of it. It's all paid off now. That was in 2007, I think. She bought her horse two years later. She's like, Julie, you changed my life. And I'm like, I didn't, but I helped her. Do you see what I mean? She did it. But she did it by choosing to join the team. She did it by choosing to believe in what we believe, by helping the clients. Like, we do it together, right? But I can help. It's fucking amazing. Totally amazing. Um, but part of it is... Imagine the downline for money forever for your people, for your team. Mm -hmm. Like Mariana, you grow somebody in your downline and then they get somebody. What? Alex is my downline. There you go. Yeah. How awesome is that? Well, Hopefully bonus awesome. for you. Awesome. You brought in awesome. And then you're going to grow a team and then you're going to get somebody and then it's going to be too down for Mariana. Mariana's going to be like retired and not have to worry about anything. <laughs> Which was your dream. It's <laughs> your dream. <laughs> This is a beautiful room right now. But imagine, like, it's it's incredible how this can sort of work. But Gary Keller sat down way back when and put a business plan together all about this. So I sort of see you guys building your teams and your businesses like a franchise has to build their team and businesses. It has to be uh, duplicatable. So I, I mean, I don't even think there's a point in building a team without being duplicatable, because 
you will not free, get free and you will not be able to sort of, one of the questions that I have that everybody asks me is, how do you delegate your friends, particularly your friends or your past clients or something like that to your team? You know, like in real estate, everybody thinks it's you, right? They come to Julie Kinnear for Julie and I'm like, they don't come to me for me. They come for the experience of what they're going to get on our team. You know what I mean? So, but part of it is believing that they will get the same experience with your team members, right? That they will get, they will know what we know. So I mean, I do a ton of training. We do a lot of practicing, a lot of scripting, all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, because I'm not a total script person, they get the gist of it though. Um, the whole thing is they get the same marketing, they get the same value system, they know it's somebody who's not going to push them, it's going to be somebody who cares about their needs first, who's going to lead with the giving hand, who's going to ask them what's important to them, who's going to focus on their family, who's going to do all that stuff. That's what I bring to the team. And now my team people, my members, Jen, Holly, Tyler, they're freaking better than I am, for sure. That's many things, maybe not everything, but most things they're really, really good at. So I often don't even meet half of our clients, even my referrals. Like somebody refers me, like my best friends don't even use me anymore because I'm like, I don't work in that neighborhood. I don't work with buyers. Like, but you can work with the team and it's really amazing and it really is amazing. We have tons of fun stuff. Like our team does great, great stuff, but it doesn't have to be me. They want to be taken care of. They want their needs met. You see what I mean? What are you laughing at? I'm just thinking of something. Okay. My mother. My mother. Yes. She would you know, I've not never working with you. I have <laughs> never gotten. I've never gotten a referral from my mother, and so a few a few months ago, she said to me, "Oh, Roberta, you know, I was talking to so and so in the hallway, and um, she's going to be selling her condo soon, and she's going on and on." And I said, "Oh, well, did you tell her that you have a daughter that's a real estate agent?" And she said, "Oh no, I'm sure she's already got an agent. I didn't bother her." <laughs> And I'm like, Mom, what the hell? You need to tell her about, oh, well, yeah, but I'm sure she already has somebody, you know. I'm like, oh, for God's sake. Well, certain people aren't as good as others. But training your clients, do you guys train your clients on referring? Like, I think that's so important. So can you share how you train your client? It's, it's a lot of uh, the drip treatment. How many times can we remind the same person to do the same thing, right? Like. We work by referral, and what that means to you is that we have more time to spend with you instead of going after new business. And it's really important. Like I sit there with John, and I say, our whole goal is that it's more it, that you're more excited and happy to refer us even before you've even used us. It's, but that's and I say you can hold us to that. Like this is where we're at. Like this is a win-win experience, right? So and you just sort of get into that, and you keep repeating it over and over. And we have client parties, and we put it in our newsletter, and we put it in our PS and our emails, and we put it everywhere. But again, the benefit is that the client knows that we're spending more time with them instead of running around getting new business and stuff like that. But again, it's, tra it's training the client. Like, for example, it's in our manual that we don't work Friday nights or Sundays. How do you like that? Because it's family time. So we try not to like work seven days a week. Is the manual that you give to your clients or the so manual clients. How do you get around this? Wow. They get around Friday night. What about other night realtors? Night. That's the that's the thing. The Sunday night. There are other realtors that are like texting and calling and like about it a is deal. Other realtors, but you know what? I have to train like myself to yeah. not go at my team after like ten o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's yeah. me training myself going, okay, Ryan, I'm not gonna bug you until the morning. Mm -hmm. You two can get time off between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. or 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. You know what I mean? So, so you put a listing offer at any time and you get a call at 6 o'clock on a Sunday. Well, an offer is special. But, you know, it's the gist of it, right? right. Like, if there's special occasions, there's special occasions. But what you want is the quality of life. You want them to understand that they have, you have a family, but it's not a detriment to them. We can also spell each other off. So for example, if you need this weekend off, Holly can look after yours, and then you take hers next weekend, or something like that. If a client needs you on a Sunday, for example, we can spell each other off. But the goal is the client understands that we have a life. Mm -hmm. But that means that's okay, because they're still getting a great experience. It's just that you 
can set the expectations up. You'd be sur surprised, you guys. You can do anything you want. You see what I mean? Anything. It's all good. That's the beauty of it. I worked with one agent. She had um, a voice message on her phone that she would return phone calls between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. and then in the evening between like 6 to 8. That's correct. So leave a message, I'm busy with my client, and I will get back to you within this. That's time blocking, right? Mm -hmm. See, that would be the expectation because that's a potential, like someone could be calling to list their house, and if I'm not answering the phone or I'm telling them, oh, I'm not going to call you back until whenever, then they may just say, well, I'm going to go on to the next person. Yeah, the way, they, the way that they say, you know, if you don't call somebody back within five yes, minutes, they're yeah, not. Yeah. It, but I would and argue that that's like a really good, that's a, that's a person who's like running a business. That's correct. They have office yeah. hours, you know? I mean, yes, there's, if you're in an offer, yeah, urgent then I stuff, deal yeah. with it. But if it's just, I don't know, it's, it's it, you're going to get the type of client that you yeah, put that's in also, there too. Right. It, and boundaries are okay. Yeah. It's like love and limits, right? Yeah. So You don't want to work with everybody. There's a lot don't. of people. Oh, yes, I know. Like, I'm like, oh, like we were talking about it today, like, do you want to work with this certain person? She's a bit of a nutcase. Yeah. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> He's great, but they're together. They make decisions together. I don't know if I want it, you know. I, that's I the whole point. Yes. Yeah. 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 There you go. If you, if you see there is a strong mismatch between two mm -hmm. people, you can't handle it. You can't cope with all the crap that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's back yeah. to your leads systems. Mm -hmm. Keep working your lead systems and your listing systems. Keep improving mm -hmm. the amount of leads you get in, improving the way you handle your listings and the number of leads you can get from your listings, mm -hmm. and then you're in better shape. Mm -hmm. It's always scarcity is the problem. So who to hire? Who to hire? Who are we going to hire? Assistant. An assistant for, for you. Like I hired assistants. That's what you want to do. Part time, and she's helping me with my systems with kind of getting me in, on the track because I'm all over the place. I am a people person, so I like more seeing people. I don't have a database. I don't have a follow-up system proper. So having someone who can actually sit like Ryan and just run it for me and just tell me, OK, now we have dates or worse. You have to call the people or this or this. That would be that for there me. There you go. Mm -hmm. I think it will be and a And that's key. working in your strength. So um, you guys are going to take courses on how to hire and who to hire and where to advertise. Last summer we had lots of fun with our sort of hiring new people because we did a little poem. Because again, we want people to know that we're a little quirky and we're a little weird. And we're, we want that. We want to attract that sort of person who is a little more, I don't know, into being a little campy, you know, a little fun. Because <laughs> We dress up for how, for you know our pumpkin event, and we have all kinds of clients' events, and we do all sorts of goofy stuff together. But again, we're trying to attract that, and it's again, it's the same with our client, but it's really in our business. So, um, part of the sort of the way that so we, you guys are sort of not looking at me about hiring. Do we care about hiring? Do we not want to talk about that? Okay, we do. Okay. We do. okay. Yes, no. I was just going to say, I mean, the thing that I would really like to get a better handle on is 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 the money, is like the splits yeah, of the team splits. people. That's like the thing that I'm like, ah, like I don't know how to, obviously being in real estate, we're talking about money all the time, but when yeah. you're dealing with client, like your own team, it's like what's kind of out there and you hear so many things and everything's like no one really knows. And mm -hmm. We have to follow, of course. That's like the, the gossip, model. the juice. I know. Right? Is it? Uh, are you following with a, like KW? Model? Dude, I don't Things? follow anybody. I to go to my own little Pied Piper drum here. Oh, okay. Um, and my systems have changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a little bit like buyers. You know how when you're pricing a house, it changes as the business changes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of different theories mm -hmm. and a lot of different sort of. I guess part of it is the benefits and stuff like that. But like, for example, uh, do you include expenses or not include mm -hmm. expenses? Right? These are the questions. So what you're talking about following the MREA model is that you have to know how much your money and how much it's going to cost you to do this. So that's number one. Again, we're running a business. We need to know our expenses and we need to know our approximate 
uh, annual, you know, and how to break it kind of down. So, Amy, it's totally up to you how you want to pay them. You can pay them 100%, mm -hmm. and they can just be on your team with by name. Mm -hmm. You can pay them 25%. Like, people pay everything and anything mm -hmm. in between. Mm -hmm. I did it. Like, I was trying to sort of solve some of the issues that have come up in my personal team. Mm -hmm. So some of those issues, uh, like when Jen joined me, she was in corporate sales. Mm -hmm. And she noticed that all of the sales were going to one sales guy. And she's like, how come the big fish go to this one dude? So for example, the big company, like he would always get the big accounts and then everybody else would sort of share the little accounts. Mm -hmm. And so that's very similar to real estate. So Roberta has a house for 1.2 and John has a condo for 600. Who gets the lead for John and who gets Roberta? Mm -hmm. That's really one of our biggest, our biggest uh, issues. And then probably places where it's like if someone specializes in an area or there's a certain kind of type of person that you just know is going to like click with the client better, right? Like that would play totally. a factor into it too, I would think. Size of deal fairness mm -hmm. was an issue when we're trying to decide how much to pay each other. Mm -hmm. And then we have the issue of proximity, right? Mm -hmm. So location. So for example, for us, mm -hmm. we have different parts of the city that like Holly specializes in the West End and Jen specializes in Central and sort of the East. So Jen gets the leads there, yeah. Holly gets the leads here. Uh, uh, how do we divide that? So. Yeah. Um, so expenses, mm -hmm. this is a very fascinating discussion. And again, you get five million different answers. So, but these are all the things that you have to deal with. So we definitely dealt with the size of the deal thing. And then we deal with location and then we deal with expenses. So for example, there's a those web people, social media people, like my expenses are high. We have, you know, everything is expensive, man. Mm -hmm. so, but like I'm not responsible for uh, people's licenses, cars, computers, things like that. I don't pay for. Mm -hmm. But I pay for our, you know, all of our staging and our our um, marketing and our admin person and our rent and all the mailings and all our client parties and all the, all that kind of stuff. We do one con show. We do all sorts of fun parties. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> But one of the ways we did, we, so we've had a few different ways of paying over the years. So for a, one, for a while there, it was a flat fee that they would each get. So we did it, oh, another thing to deal with in real estate is the number of deals, like the not being paid for a while. Long time. So you know in real estate, we have mortgages on our properties, our houses, and then but we only get paid every once in a while. I have a whole bunch of closings now, we didn't have any closings maybe for a month or something like that. So one of the things that we've tried to get rid of in our, in our team is being paid on each other's deals. So if you do a deal, mm -hmm. John does a deal, Mariana does a deal, you get paid part of your deal, but John also gets paid part of your deal, mm -hmm. and Mariana gets paid part of your deal. And that's how we've done it. Oh, okay. So we do a small percentage that you get paid on your deal, and then John gets a small per small percentage, and then Mariana does, but you get the same, so you each basically get the same percentage. So John does a deal and you get paid. Mm -hmm. and Mariana does a deal and you get paid. That'd be really great for the team, just like keeping the glue in the team. Another <laughs> thing that we've done is we've average priced everything. So if you sell a $2 million house and John sells a $1 million house, your $2 million is added to the one million, and in fact, you guys each sold 1.5. Okay. So that's how we've done it. Got it. This is what I'm saying. I'm very unique. I do not follow everybody else's model. It's mm -hmm. a lot of math. Uh -huh. It's a lot of math. But we don't. We we reconcile every six months. So at the end of June and the end of December, we reconcile it. Mm -hmm. Which means that if, for example, you sold five and John has sold three, so like we. We just make sure that none of you got paid the whole amount, mm -hmm. so then the balance is paid at the end. So that's how we basically have done it, mm -hmm. to make it even for everybody. Then the question is, do you pay expenses or not? For years, we were all paying expenses, and then it was a flat fee, and then it was an increased fee. But then I'm collecting money, and then that's sort of a nasty thing to do, and mm -hmm. you know, taxes-wise, and, and HST, and messiness, and then what if you're not making enough money, uh, it becomes emotional and all this stuff. So we got rid of it, so I'm paying the expenses now. Mm -hmm. 
but like for example, Belinda, who works with Sarah, I know they have a different, totally different split than I do. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. for us, our big things were averaging the sale price out, making sure everybody's being paid consistently through the whole year, and um, you know, like, and you when you're being paid on each other's deals, you're also excited. You know, mm -hmm. the enthusiasm. You're more mm -hmm. the team together. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. all we did. In. Thanks. It's very unique. Mm -hmm. I can give you more Lots information, of but <laughs> well, you just put a spreadsheet together. Yeah, it works out just fine. There is an average sale price. Like if we're talking about, you know, fifty deals, you'll know approximately how much it's going to be right away. Like if your average sale price is a million, or then you have to make sure your commission is a certain amount, right? Mm -hmm. So it all comes in, but it's on your spreadsheet. So buyers, you paid this, and sellers, you paid that. Da -da 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 -da. Once you figure it out, it's fine. Got it. Yeah, it's a setup. So. The years is more complicated with more people. She just hires one. It's less complicated. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like for example, on Theo's way back when, I was paid a flat fee on everything, mm -hmm. a small percentage on all deals, and that was fine. Like it's, it, it's what works and how productive the other person is and mm -hmm. stuff like that. If they're new, if they're not new, you know. Like for example, now I have people under my people, so my original team now have people. So now they have people in their downline. So Tyler has somebody, Jen has somebody, and Holly has somebody in their downline. So they're in my downline, and now they have people. And that's what I tried to help them with. But they also get paid part of their deal. So I get less. Got it. But they're their mentee, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. So they're training them more. So it's win-win, do you see what I mean? Like, yeah. Each scenario is different and all that kind of good stuff. Are you leaving? What time is it? Okay. So does that answer everybody about how to pay people? So I know it's sometimes it's 50-50, 60-40, 70-30. It's very, it depends, you know, sometimes it depends on if it's your need, for example. Like, for example, on our team, you get a benefit. You get a higher percentage of your deal if, it, if you, if it was your referral. Mm -hmm. So on our team, for example, if I sourced the lead, like it came from our website, for example, but they were they referred us somebody else that referral is theirs mm -hmm. so they worked with you like I our, our team sourced the lead came from the web came from the sign whatever you work with the client and then you refer somebody then that person who referred is they get an extra benefit from mm -hmm. if they repeat so if, if Roberta even if you're a past client of mine and you work with Jen and then you work with Jen again five years later Jen, it's now Jen's client Okay. Other things that we do to make it fair, because again, it has to be fair, mm -hmm. is you get to take your whole database with you. So whoever is working with you and was your source originally, you get to go home, go away with. So that client that you gave Jen five years ago was now her client goes in her database? No, or? that one stays with me if it originally stayed, stayed with me. But anybody, Roberta, like you did an open house and you met somebody or a friend or anybody, mm -hmm. anything like that. If it, if it came via you, then even clients that I've worked with, like Tyler's given me clients, because they were in areas or price ranges or something that I, they're still his clients, even though I work with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Good to see you. Me too. So any questions more about this sort of thing? So there's a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. But you're running a business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of money is involved here. And people's careers and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I want you to really. I wrote it down here. I literally wrote it down. I'm like, this is a really serious one. Okay. This is not just a fly by the seat of your pants kind of experience. But the cool thing is that it really works. And I mean, you can have years and years and years of success mm -hmm. and quality of life. And everybody's winning and it's all good. Um, so. So for. Yes. Uh, for non. Licensed activity. Yes. Would you hire another realtor, or would you? Because some people really don't like to be a salesperson to have a license, but they don't want to be a salesperson. Right. Well, I think you hire people who are good at what they're good at. Um, but you can. I mean, I had a non-licensed person agent. I mean, non-licensed assistant for years and years and years, doing tons of stuff for me. 
they're not talking to the client yeah. necessarily. I mean, maybe at client parties and stuff like that, but they're not giving advice and stuff. You know, they're not doing the license sort of thing. What are you licensed, Brian? No, but I act like it. Mm -hmm. it. Like I will not give. Obviously, I can't give you know advice on. Okay, this is what you should be paying. But Amy and I will have that conversation because. And, you know, I'm pulling up, you know, I'm doing a CMA and I'm pulling up, you know, 15 properties going, okay, you know, this this is the high end, this is the low end, this is what you're usually paying. Mm -hmm. You know, 575 is the right price to pay on that condo. But thing. Amy has to decide mm -hmm. yeah. at the end of the day. Because mm -hmm. I, it's the same way, even though Claire is actually licensed, so for me, she's licensed, so I don't have any issues at all. She can rent a offer, she can give advice or whatever, but at the end of the day, the realtor who's responsible for the client is responsible for giving that mm -hmm. the right advice as far as you know pricing strategy, what you can expect, letters of opinions, all that kind of sort of thing. Anything else? I've got all kinds of stuff we can talk about forever. You realize that there's like a thousand courses on how to build a team or just how to be a leader and all that kind of stuff, but. Um, one of my other sort of tricks, one of the big things that I learned way back when, which was going from being a really, really busy, high-producing realtor, hiring an admin, a good admin, it was all good. So Nicole's fantastic, all good. Hired KJ, again, all good, great, fantastic, everybody's doing great, but we're not going anywhere because it was, we were meeting on the fly, that's a big problem. You know what I mean? In real estate, we meet on the fly. Let's meet at that time, you know, Tuesday at 1, I'm going to meet with you, and then, you know, a home inspection comes up, or an offer comes up, or a call goes too long, or whatever, and it's like, okay, forget it, 2 o'clock. Okay, then it doesn't work out, and then you're at 3, oh, no, i got to go pick up my kid, oh, no, blah, blah, blah. I've got an appointment, i got showings, I've got an offer coming in, you know, all that sort of stuff. So where the other life-changing things, and write this down, is to have a weekly meeting at the exact same time. No matter what, no matter what, I'm telling you, it is a life-changing experience. To add on to that, I totally agree, mm -hmm. because uh, when I worked with Monty, we did that. It was Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Yep. You know, I haven't worked with him for almost three years, and you still, still know that. Um, but it's also time-blocking other, maybe not even you know, meetings, but other sort of group events that okay, yeah, we're going to need to do this, you know, whether it's, you know, go for drinks or yeah. whatever, and, you know, setting a regular schedule so that, yeah, that's, you know, a, you know, team activity. Well, it's, it's really good, and for example, if you have this, then you have to say to no to a client, no, we cannot do a home inspection at this time, mm -hmm. or no, we're not showing properties at this time, we are showing them, like, that's our sort of sacred time, and we do some coaching in that time, so we do some analyzing of what's going on, we do a lot of, you know, housekeeping sort of stuff, um, you know, what's going on with the website, what's going on with new clients, matching up listings to buyers, all this sort of stuff. But again, if you're meeting, if, you're, if Chelsea's joining your team, meet every week, same day, same time, same place. Everybody in this office knows when our team is going to be here, right? Yeah. Always know we're here every single week, no matter what, whether somebody's sick or not, we're all going to be here. Um, but it changed the direction of our whole team. I'm telling you, it's a weird but true. Realtor, we're so inconsistent in our lives that I feel like the consistency alone, it's getting rid of that island, it's that accountability, it's like, okay, so we go through our CGI every week. We go through our, you know, we do all that shit, our 411s, all the sort of stuff that we're supposed to be doing. It's like your homework is due that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it helps. It helps a lot. So I feel like, like John, I know, for, you know, he sees it in the future, downline teams, but the future, I can see it because Chelsea's going to get her license and all that kind of stuff. Some of the things for you to do ahead of time, your own life plan, because you have a plan. And there's a reason why Chelsea's joining you, like, you know. But also the plan for the team, you know, what do, what do you bring to the clients? And what are you trying to pass on to the next people, you know? I definitely hire for attitude, train for skill. You're hiring a person who's going to make the same life decisions you're going to make. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Somebody you can trust with everything. Because with, they're your reputation, right? Like, my name is out there, but it's... 
people are carrying it. People are carrying my name on their business cards. Mm -hmm. Like it's a big freaking deal. Mm -hmm. My whole career is basing trusting you, for example, if you were on my team. A huge trust thing. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love. That's what we call it. Mm -hmm. They might say I'm not always loving, but I'm almost always loving. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a hard ass. <laughs> okay, did we answer all the questions? Natalie, you're not sure learning more. Did you learn more? Yeah. 40 transactions, you learn more, you know what you're doing next steps. What's your next step? Slow down. <laughs> Slow down, good. Stabilize my position. There you go, put some thought into this. Put your next future into it. Uh, Ryan, adding another min, next step, successful next person. Are we there? Uh, well, it's, we, you know. Once we have a weekly we, meeting, we, that's we, it, well, we'll talk about it in our next weekly meeting. Yeah. It's amazing, so yeah. what we do is we set goals for the year, and we say, okay, this quarter we're gonna do this, this quarter we're gonna do that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then, like right now, like we said, we're doing videos, scripting, and initial consultations this year, so those are our sort of things. One year we created this thing called the Inukshuk Club. We had never done it up until like two or three years ago. But we were able to implement it because once you come up with an idea, then you actually have to follow through with it mm -hmm. to actually make the idea come true. Mm -hmm. And that's what the team meetings are for too. Mm -hmm. Like you can actually get shit done. Not just sell a house, because the selling the house will continue to happen. But it might die away unless you're planning more kind of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Or your life might get out of control or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amy, you're good. Mm -hmm. Slow and steady, 12 years later. I know. So what Imagine where I'll be in 24 years. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what Dan Sullivan said? He said make a business plan, 25 year business plan, because you can do anything in 25 years. Mm -hmm. So if you want to land, you know, your rocket ship on the moon, you can plan it out. He's, he's big on that. Mm -hmm. He also thinks he's going to live to 156, so what can I tell you? <laughs> he thinks 72 or something is young, but um, Roberto, what are your next steps? Um. Well, to do a life plan, yeah, a I do. I do have a vision board at home. Good, there you go. Um, but it's kind of like there's stuff that needs to go on there, and I need to do a business plan. And the I just, vision board is not your life plan. It's just sort of your right. It's just sort of a vision of your right. life plan. Right. Yeah. So I definitely need to do a life plan. And um, do you need an accountability plan. partner? I have one. Who? Courtney. What are you going to tell her when you're doing your life plan? Sure, I'll tell her on Monday. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See, she's got an accountability partner. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Mariana, what are your next steps? Uh, some soul searching, uh, you know, uh, life plan. Good. I planned that in December. I haven't done it, so I really have to put this down. And uh, the mission statement, vision yeah. plan for sure. I have the uh, vision board. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I need to. That. Good. So the vision board is your personal stuff. The vision, the written out vision is really your vision for the team or your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's more personal. Mm -hmm. And Naveen, what are you doing? What, what are your next steps? No, um, I'm still trying to figure out how this thing is working out between the You got to sit down and decide what you want it to be. Not with them, just yourself. That's all. Yeah. And it's that's not being selfish. What it's doing is it brings strength yeah. to the relationship, and we'll like clarity. Yeah. You see what I mean? A little clarity will go a long way for all of us. Clarity, they say, is like I don't know. It'll make you stronger. Ask Brendan Burchard. He's all about clarity. Do you I'm in a I'm in a class with him. How are you? Okay, another one. All <laughs> I'm, right. I'm behind two videos, but. <laughs> to get caught up. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you for talking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you learned tons. The rest of you missed it. I'll, I'll see it. I'm so sorry. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. 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 Thank you can do it. We're ready. We're I just, know. It's like clarity. Yeah. The newborn doesn't help, but I think the <laughs> yeah. app will be like what I need. Get up a little earlier, just have like 15 minutes of just oh, like it changes focus. your life. 
This is why I come to work. Yeah. It's quieter here exactly. than it is in my home right now. So I'm just impressed to be here. I know. I right. like work though. I'm not really like six weeks though. That's that's like being American. That's longer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how they longer than I did with my daughter. And they did, like because I have Ryan. Like Ryan and I work together now. Plus now I have a nanny at home. But when I had my daughter, I didn't have anybody anywhere. And I just oh like threw and myself right back into it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at Remax, and I went from platinum, which is like two fifty to five hundred. So I doubled my business that year. But it wasn't like mentally sane. It was insane. <laughs> oh, yeah, it sure. was crazy. Like I was like running and crazy and doing all the offers and doing everything. And it was good on paper, but like upstairs, it was like upstairs. Nuts. It was nuts. The, the big fear. Yeah. Is, I'm hoping that people got that from today. Is to yeah. Work on your business. A yes. Bit. Yeah. If you spend a little bit of time at the beginning, mm -hmm. you will be able to grow leaps and bounds. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, being on that treadmill. Forever. Yeah, because it was just it was crazy. So, six weeks now doesn't really seem That's crazy. Feels like I had a vacation. Cause <laughs> you can do it. There's. Uh, you can. Yeah. Lots of love.